to refresh this page. Now, what hopefully has happened, I can see that my page here refreshed, everything looked okay, but hopefully what's happened is over in Web Scared, if I switch to the summary page, I can now see that there has actually been a request that was processed through Web Scared. That is exactly what I was looking for. So I can see now that Web Scarab is acting as a proxy. From the point of view of the user, of course, everything is still the same. Nothing has changed. But from the point of view of us as a tester, I can now see everything that's going back and forth. In fact, if I select one of these and right click on it, I can choose to, for instance, show the conversation. And when I do so, let me just make this window a little bit smaller so it'll fit in our screen here. When I show that conversation, I can see all of the details of how this request was made. For instance, I can see all of the different HTTP headers that were sent from the client to the server. Now, of course, uh, this is a little bit compressed because uh, of us trying to do this as an online video. On your screen, of course, you'll have your entire screen to work with, so you'll get a lot more data. Uh, personally, I find it easier to look at the raw values, though, than I do to look at the parse values because this is actually what the web server is going to see. So my web client just sent this request, and here is all of the HTTP that made this happen. So I can see the URL that was requested right up here. I can see how the HTTP request was sent. It's using version 1.1. I see some information about my browser. I can also see how caching is going to be handled. And down here I can see some other things, like the actual host I'm connecting to. Now the IP address of the host you use will probably be different. I'm using a, a different set of virtual machines here, but I have the same virtual image installed. I have the same uh, web application. At the bottom, we can see the response that was sent from the server to the client. And again, you can look at this as the raw data. And if you look down here in the bottom under HTML, if I scroll down, I know it's very small, but you can see that we've actually got the entire web page down here because it's parsing it out right now as HTML. Though you can view to, choose to view that as XML, for instance, or just raw text, or personally, again, I'll view it as raw, because now I can see the HTTP headers that were sent back, and I can see the raw HTML. So at this point, keep in mind, we're looking at a proxy here. We're not actually looking in the browser. So this is now stored content that's kept track of here in the Web Scarab interface. And every time I make a request, it's going to update in the interface here and show me what's happening. There's actually quite a bit that we can do to do web application testing. Let me just give you a few pointers of a couple of things that can be tested. For instance, one of the first things I'll do is switch over to the proxy tab, and I want to reconfigure the proxy so that it does some special things for me. So under the miscellaneous tab, notice here that there's an option to prevent the browser from caching content. Now, I've already got that turned on. It's not turned on by default, but in doing testing of applications, it's a very critical option to turn on because this is going to prevent you from seeing old content in your browser while you're doing your testing. In other words, what could happen is you might actually find a vulnerability, but you can't tell because your browser is showing you old content. This forces you to always get new content in your browser. With that turned on, I'm going to go in and make a couple of other changes to the manual edit settings. But we're going to first take a look at the web application and how it responds in a couple of instances so that we can see what's really happening. Now you'll notice that for Buggy Bank, it actually provides you with account information right on the main page. But I'm not going to make use of that just yet. First, I want to do some very basic testing to see uh, what's happening with, for instance, some input validation and also to see if perhaps I can bypass the authentication and maybe see if there's a broken authorization system. So let me click on the login button here. And that'll take me to the login page. And at this point, I haven't bothered to get any accurate account information. So I'm just going to put some numbers in there. And I'm just going to jam in a PIN number. And I know this data is not valid. But that's OK. I'm just starting my testing. So I'm going to click the Submit button. And no big surprise, it tells me, I'm sorry, you've got an invalid account number. Uh, well, this is actually a bad thing here. It probably shouldn't tell me I have an invalid account number. It should probably just tell me you've got invalid authentication information. That would be much better. So right there is a little bit of a vulnerability. It's something you would look for in auditing an application. 
but let's look at this a little bit more closely. 